What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and in this video we're going to teach you how to play Vestal in Darkest Dungeon 2. Like all the other guides that I make, we're going to go over her strengths and her weaknesses, how to play her, how her skills work, how her paths work, her trinkets, and some teammates to pair her with to get you started. Starting off, what are Vestal's strengths? She is a really good support unit, one of the best in the game. She's very flexible in terms of her rank, so you can put her pretty much anywhere in the party and she has stuff to do. And she is surprisingly tanky. It's a little hard for her to main tank, but she is a great support off tank. So if you want to run those risky builds or free up your main tank like Leper or Man at Arms to do some more damage, then Vestal is your gal. Weaknesses. What is Junia bad at? As good and cool as her conviction mechanic is, the turns where you have all three tokens may not be the turn that you want to throw stuff out, meaning that she has the potential to float conviction tokens as in waste them pretty consistently. The other side of this is sometimes you'll only have two tokens when you need to use the skill, but you won't have the chance to get three. Her next weakness is that she is a low damage output character. This is a bit of a mixed bag in terms of what it actually means. She can hit really hard with Judgment, especially if it's all charged up. She can give someone else some good damage with Consecration of Light. But outside of those two things, her consistent damage output per turn is pretty low. Her third weakness is that she is a mastery hungry character. She really wants those mastery points. All of her stuff gets so much better with mastery. It's already pretty good at base, but if you're giving her mastery, her Judgment hits harder. Her consecrations are stronger, her heals are stronger. Pretty much whatever you give her makes her way better with those mastery points. Which leads to some hard choices. Some characters can function perfectly fine without mastery, like Flagellant, but Vestal really, really wants it to shine. How do we play Vestal? The easiest, most straightforward tips that I can give is that regardless of the build, you probably want to drop some consecrations on your teammates. Both of them are good for different reasons, and we'll talk about that in the skill section. The next thing you want to do is make sure she has a way to get rid of her conviction tokens. This can be Judgment, Mace Bash, Divine Grace, anything that uses those tokens, but she should have something that can get rid of them, because a lot of her skills that do use them get very powerful if she has them. My final tip on how to play Vestal is to make sure that you have a clearly defined role for her in mind. Is she trying to support the main damage dealer? Okay, then you need Consecration of Light, you put that up on turn one, and then your other stuff comes after. Is she your tank or an off tank? Well, you have to have Sanctuary, maybe Consecration of Fortitude, and make sure that she is guarding the right people and dropping those defensive tokens as early as possible. Overall, Vestal is a character that is only as strong as the team around her, so if everyone is able to take advantage of her kit, then she feels like a powerhouse. She might be the best example in the entire game of a character that needs all five of her skills, and she will most likely use all five each battle. Now it's time to talk about Vestal's skills, and she's someone that's on the new path system, so the way her paths interact with her skills is much different, so it's gonna take a little more time to go through those, but we'll do it. And just starting off with Wanderer, Hand of Light does Pretty low damage overall at 2 to 3, then 3 to 4, and it gives out some buffs. The buffs are nice. The damage, not so much, to the point where this almost... This is probably the worst ability she has, if I had to be honest. It's not outright terrible, but there's very little reason to run it. Especially after you get the Consecrations, because this just does... Or those do this more effectively, without, you know, being as restrictive to rank and stuff. Illumination is a really good move, and so both the normal version and the Confessor version, they do different stuff, but in terms of what it does for Wanderer, you know, it gets rid of stealth and dodge, and when it's upgraded, it blocks dodge gain. This is very powerful, especially because it lasts for two rounds, so even if the enemy goes, you know, six times a turn or a round or whatever, it's going to stay for two full rounds, and that can be really nice, so... This is a great move. Not one you have on at all times, but when you do need it, it's very good to have it. Judgment is her bread and butter damage ability. It scales up with conviction tokens to hit harder. And when it's maxed out, it hits actually pretty, pretty hard. So if you have some unused conviction and you are able to put vulnerable on a target for her or give her strength or something like that, it scales very, very well. And so... You can, no joke, Judgment crit into like the 40s 
So even though I do say she doesn't put out a lot of damage, she has the potential to hit very hard, but takes some setup. And in terms of that, anyone can hit really hard if you give them enough setup and stuff, but it is worth mentioning for her. And so we, oh, and it's also another source of burn, which burn is pretty rare. So the fact that she does it does give her some runaway synergy, albeit very minor. Divine Grace is a pretty solid ability. It's just, you don't need to hit it that often. And her other heals are more efficient usually. So it's not bad to ever have this. That's a nice ace in the hole kind of thing. So if they're low HP, you heal them. The more conviction you have, you heal them harder. I don't think this changes with any of her paths, but it's pretty straightforward as a heal. Consecration of Fortitude. So this one puts both the Consecrations, they put a token like controlled burn if you've seen that. But what it is, is it's a position token. So it stays on the rank. So if I put it, for instance, on rank two, it doesn't matter who's in rank two, it's not gonna follow them. It's gonna stay right here. So anyone that enters that space will get the buff on their next turn or whatever. And so Consecration of Fortitude is the defensive one. It has a 50% chance to give you dodge or block and then upgraded it's dodge plus or block plus. This is really good if someone is going to have to take a lot of hits because it's just an extra layer of defense. It's not as good as light because the game is damage oriented, but this is still a really good ability. Next is Ministrations. I am really starting to fall in love with this move because damage over time is so common and it's not that uncommon for fights to have more than one. So it could do like bleed and blight or bleed and burn for instance. And then you have a way to cure stun and daze. That's really helpful to have, and it can hit anyone in the party. I wish you could use it up front to give Frontline Vestal a bit more stuff to do. But if you do remove these things when it's mastered, then you give them resist to that effect too. That's really good for some encounters. Because there are chances that if the enemy hits you with one bleed, they're going to hit you with another. So being able to resist it more consistently is really good. Mace Bash, not as good in terms of the damage output as... Judgment. I also kind of wish that the damage doubling flipped to uh, the two conviction to be consistent with judgment. But, you know, if you are able to make use of getting past dodge and guard and block and stuff like that, it's it's a nice closer to finish something off that's under some defense. So it's not not the best move, but it's it's OK. You know, it, it's good if you're up in the front line because you don't really have much else to attack with. Sanctuary is good both base and with Chaplain. That's her path that buffs this. But yeah, it's guard. She gets some blocks. She's pretty tanky. And when it's upgraded, it heals two stress, which is nice. It's not enough to make her your team's only stress healer, but it's good enough to keep people low if you're able to throw it out consistently. Consecration of Light, this is the best move she has access to. And when you have the base version, it just gives out strength every turn. And when it's mastered, it has a 75% chance to give strength or 25% chance to give crits. And that is super powerful for a lot of characters. Even your like damage over time dealers like Runaway or Plague Doctor, they don't mind having the crit token because that's more damage for a longer time out of those dot moves. So this is a really powerful ability. One of the first ones you upgrade in pretty much all circumstances. And it's it's hard to justify not running it. Like I've tried not running it and I notice its absence. So it's a really good move. And it kind of makes up for her not having a lot of damage herself. Next is Divine Comfort. I was really worried about how good this would be when I saw it coming back. Because in DD1, it's a powerhouse of a move. But in this game, it's actually pretty well balanced. The super long cooldown means that you only get it on average like once a fight, maybe twice in a boss, depending on what the boss is. And it's not a ton of healing output, but it's enough to help keep you topped off, especially those road fights. When you're driving between battles, it'll keep you higher. And then you drive to the next battle and you heal in between there. So it's not bad for that. It's not a bad thing to upgrade early. So it's, it's a good move. It's a good move. It's not overpowered. I would say, unless you have Icon of Light, then it's really strong, but before then, it's just a solid move. Usually good to have on most builds. Mantra, I think this changes on every single path that she has, and Mantra is a weird one. 
because it has the potential to hit multiple targets so it can be really effective in those situations like there's one with chaplain we'll talk about and it's another way to get rid of her conviction but the issue is that sometimes you'll have like three conviction and you don't want to use this yet so it's like if i use it now then it's it's a waste you know i could wait for another turn then you just end up floating conviction tokens and not spending them but this move changes the most so we'll have to talk about it individually each time next we got patharonis so confessor let's get the confessor outfit this is i feel like this is a fan favorite and so this one is a debuff heavy path and un, or just like wanderer she gets conviction at the start of the turn whereas the other two she has to generate it a different way but confessor also gets it at the start of the turn and her conviction tokens with confessor give her increased debuff chance per token so you may not want to spend them but usually you're going to throw these out with judgment and that's when they get dropped so you get more debuff chance your stuff sticks it's pretty nice it changes hand of light illumination judgment and mantra so look at hand of light it becomes an attack that hits two targets with less reach and when it's upgraded it weakens them kind of wish this was like double weaken or something but you know it is what it is and as such this is really just not this is not a good move for this this path even though you get the double weaken on or the weaken on two targets but like it's just the the damage the crit the strength and all that is not worth it to me illumination on confessor though is probably her best ability that's not consecration and on confessor this removes two positive tokens upgraded removes three the reason this is so good is because sometimes the enemy gets some really hard to remove tokens like crit and repost or even strength to an extent and this gets rid of those before they hit you especially the upgrade so this is a really 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 good one to have and depending on what you're about to go fight i would upgrade this kind of early judgment loses pretty much all of its damage in confessor in exchange for some tokens like some debuffs so you can get weaken and vuln then when it's upgraded it's two of each it's a nice way to spend your conviction because you get the bonus debuff chance but at the same time it's it's not as uh it's not as strong as i was hoping it would be so it's it's not bad it's just not not as amazing imo divine grace doesn't change and then what's the other one we talked about it was mantra so mantra becomes pretty good with this instead of and you have to upgrade it too that's that's the one thing i don't like about mantra is on every single path i think it's always the 10 percent heal and then you have to upgrade it to make it really good so that's what i was saying before she's really hungry for your mastery but if you have three conviction tokens and the target is consecrated you can take away all those pesky negative tokens which isn't as good as it sounds i mean if you have stun or blind or something sure but your consecrations are canceling out the other stuff anyway but this will help them s help those stick when it comes back to their turn i guess so yeah it's it's nice to have another source of debuff cleanse is all i'm saying as far as confessor goes though i prefer her in the back so rank three or four and running something like this so like i i don't even run mantra on this man but you could but you just you need some way to get rid of your conviction and so both consecrations are good uh, one of the heals is good so either comforts or grace or if you have some like plague doctor then you can do like ministrations you know just someone else that can pick up the heal burden but really you want illumination because it's just good to snipe those random tokens you can put her up in the front too and use like mace bash and hand of light but i wouldn't recommend that for her next path chaplain this is my favorite one and so chaplain is her tanky path and so right here she gets conviction by getting hit so that's why you have to keep guarding people or put her in a spot where she can get hit a lot too and every conviction token she gets gives her 10 percent extra stun and move resist so she can get up to 30 percent this is very relevant for some fights and so i like chaplain a lot for that reason and you don't necessarily have to dump her conviction because it becomes a really good buff if she keeps it which is probably why there's no conviction move that gets buffed on this actually no mantra my bad 
So what changes? Handle light. Uh, kind of goes back to what it was before, except instead of handing someone else strength, it looks like it hands them block. And what you want to do with this is, if you want to guarantee who gets it, you put her in one. So that way the random adjacent ally is always the person behind her. But you can also put her in two. But even then, I, I don't recommend running this. Just because it, it, it's the fact that she gets like the strength token, where she doesn't necessarily need it. It's not the most efficient way to do damage, to strength and then hit, strength and then hit over and over for her. But uh, you don't have to run Illumination. I would run Mace Bash because, you know, it's your upfront damage ability. Again, you can run both Consecrations. You can't run Ministrations up here, so you can run Mantra for the Stress Heal. And if you want to go pure support and you don't want to bonk stuff, you can run Divine Comfort and then run something like this. And so that way she can buff, defend, heal, and she has a way to get rid of Conviction. But if you're going to run her with this, you need a team that can pick up the damage for her. Finally, we come to Seraph, which is considered Vestal Plus by the community just because it's pretty much Wanderer Vestal, but better. And I think it's the last path you get anyway, but this is a really strong one for her just because it makes the Consecrations more efficient. And so the only things that change are the Consecration effects and Mantra again. But also she gets conviction by triggering consecration. So the longer it's down, the more token she's picking up. There's no actual change to the effects of the consecrations other than they last for five turns instead of three. So they stay around for longer, but also the cooldown for them goes up to five. So when you drop them is a little more important. And also if you're gonna use mantra, you have to plan around the cooldowns of them. Mantra does change. It's not the 10% base healing and it goes up to 50, and it removes all Consecration, which, with how long the cooldowns are, this doesn't usually feel worth it to me. But it is a nice way to heal two people for a ton of HP. So if you need to, it's there. But otherwise, this is pretty much standard Vestal. You can use Judgment to dump Conviction. You can run Comfort or some other support move of your choice. You want both Consecrations, because that's what the path is focused on. And then some like Ministrations are again, maybe Sanctuary or Grace or something like that to help support the team. And she goes in either three or four, probably four, just because you might hit that icon of light, but you can put her in three as well. They're both really good. Next, we'll talk about Junius Trinkets and we'll start with the class ones. So Icon of the Light, this thing is ridiculous. If you wanna put her in rank four, it's not plus two healing for every heal, it's plus two healing for her regeneration, so Divine Comfort. But that means that without mastery, it's healing four per turn, and then with mastery, it's five per turn. That is a lot of healing output. So that's really good. And since she's in rank four, the minus melee skills just doesn't matter at all. And then the other part of it where you heal stress by using consecration, this only applies to when the consecration is set down. It's not per turn, so your consecrations aren't healing one stress every turn. That would be nice, but also probably broken. Profane Scroll is your frontline damage Vestal thing, so it's really cool that this came back from the first game. And it's actually probably more cohesive for a frontline build than it was in that game as well. Maybe not, actually, but that's something else. So, when she's up in rank 2, she gets bonus damage, so that's for Mace Bash specifically. And if she's in rank 1, she gets bonus HP, so you want to be tanking with her. If you use Handle Light, she can taunt. If she's in the back, she gets stressed, so obviously you want to keep her up front and then decide if she's doing damage or taking hits. Smoldering Firewood is pretty cool. If you have a flammable item, so some other trinket that might be tagged as flammable or a flammable combat item, there's a few of those, then when she has that on, she does bonus damage for hitting the target. Also, Illumination can burn targets when she uses it, which is nice. And then finally, if she gets hit, she has a chance to burn herself. But this gives damage to Illumination, which is my favorite part about it. So if you want it for the damage and stuff, that's fine. But I actually really like that Illumination can burn. So that's that's primarily why I grab it. There are quite a few neutral trinkets to actually talk about for Vestal because a lot of them can make her pretty good. And the first one we're talking about is Wolf's Blood. She is a character that really wants to go first and to set up since Consecration ticks on the teammate's turn. 
That means that you want her to go first so she can put it down where it needs to be. But also her heals to help keep people alive or remove dots with ministrations and stuff. There are a lot of reasons she wants speed. So anything that gives her speed or extra turns, so pocket watch, temptation, those are fantastic for her. Protectorate, this is healing given. This does not apply to regeneration. That has to be healing received. But for protectorates, the other heals that she has, like Grace and Mantra and stuff, those heal more. It's pretty nice, not mandatory. Some other notable ones, the mid-tier token interaction trinkets like Bulwark Ban. She doesn't usually need to attack, or if you are attacking, you're specifically making sure she can hit because you're trying to do, you know, like a three conviction judgment. So just giving her random dodge on turn start is really nice, and the gain on miss doesn't usually come into play. Same with Buttressing Ban, getting a crit heal when you need it is awesome, or crit judgment, same reason that missing isn't as detrimental. Stone Mount is pretty cool because this can make it so her Sanctuary Guard tokens become block plus without Chaplain and stuff, that's really nice. Or her Consecration of Fortitude turns those regular block tokens into block plus, so that's really nice. She can make use of on hit trinkets like Clenching Claws since she can guard people so she has a chance to get hit. Redoubt, she's not the fastest character so it's not too hard to get her speed down to two or less. And this, this keeps going, man. She's got so many good options. As I said before, extra turn trinkets like Pocket Watch are really good on her. Sickening Silence because she can, again, guard and she doesn't need to hit targets so diseases aren't as bad for her. And that way you can just retaliate with Blight. Snap Judgment gives her constant speed over long fights. Temptation, bonus turns, misstep. You don't have to do damage with Vestal for her to succeed, so this is just pure upside in most cases. Compass, you know, defensive tokens. Compass good on everyone. I'm going to stop <laughs> recommending it, maybe. And I think that's it, but I will say Adrenalizing Ash as well, because this is just a chance to give her a random speed token. So a lot of trinkets work on this character, not just offensive ones, but a lot of the defensive ones and other support stuff. So be creative. Let's round out the video by talking about good teammates for Vestal. The first one I'll suggest is Hellion. Hellion is a really good partner for Vestal because Hellion likes Consecration of Light. It gives her strength and potentially crits, which is always good. It can also give her defensive tokens through Fortitude. And Vestal acts as a nice safety net to keep Hellion alive, so she doesn't have to burn her adrenaline rushes too early in combat. And there's one last nice synergy with Hellion, and that is that Hellion can generate taunt with toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So if you want to taunt and then guard her with Vestal, that means Vestal gets hit instead. So there's a lot of synergy between these two, but it's mostly what Vestal does for Hellion more than what Hellion can do for Vestal. The next really good character to pair with Vessel is Flagellant. Flagellant has some ridiculous healing output, probably better than Vessel if I could say. And he has the reach flexibility for damage to cover what Vessel may not do in damage. So pairing these two together can be really good, and it's really hard to have someone die on your team. It can still happen, but you have two really potent healers to prevent that from happening. One other really nice thing to have between these two is that Flagellant can use Endure to remove someone else's stress, and then Vestal can Sanctuary Flagellant to remove it from him. It's a little inefficient in terms of the time and turns it takes, but it is a really effective way of putting all the stress on one person while getting stress off someone else, and then Vestal slowly pulls it off Flagellant over time. The third character to pick to pair with Vestal is actually pretty difficult because a lot of characters appreciate her buffs, but I am going to suggest Highwayman. Since Highwayman is a damage monster, he really likes having Consecration of Light. It can save him turns from having to use Take Aim, for instance. And since he's not great at generating defensive tokens himself, Vestal can keep him safe with Consecration of Fortitude. It's a really nice pairing because Highwayman can make use of all of the buffs that Vestal throws out, and he puts out enough damage to cover up for Vestal's lack of it. All right, y'all, that's gonna do for the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. If there's anything I missed in terms of tips and synergy, of course, always feel free to say so. If you wanna get more involved with the community or support the channel, check out the description box under the video for links to places like Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.